Hello everybody, today I would like to talk with you about ignition system and for that I have here spark plug from the piston engine and igniter plug from the jet engine and as you can see they are completely different but they have the same purpose they are here to ignite mixture of the fuel and air inside of the combustion chamber and inside of the cylinder of the piston engine they have also similar output which is between 15 to 20 kilovolts but from there they are basically completely different and i would like to start with a fire rate and let's start with a fire rate of jet engine igniter plug this plug fire uh, once per second up to 50 percent of n2 and uh, from that point a mixture of the fuel and air in the combustion chamber is able to burn without help of the igniter plug but of course they can be activated again if aircraft must fly through the heavy rain and this is just prevention of the flame out but don't worry jet engine can handle a huge amount of water okay that was jet engine igniter plug now let me tell you about four stroke piston engine spark plug this spark plug have a fire rate from eight times per second at 1000 rpm up to 50 times per second at 6000 rpm and the reason for that is that this engine works in stroke during first stroke a mixture of air and fuel is dragged into the cylinder by piston during second stroke this mixture is compressed during third this uh, mixture is ignite which will create energy that push piston down and the last stroke is exhaust during which piston will push exhaust gases through the exhaust valve and this will gonna be repeat over and over until you shut down the engine okay that was a fire rate of these two plugs but why they are so different reason is that they work in different environments if you take a look on the car spark plug it is screw in the head of the engine and only part which is exposed in the cylinder are electrodes and heat which is created inside of the cylinder is the spread into the head of the engine on the other hand only this part of the igniter plug is installed on the body of the jet engine and this section is exposed inside of the combustion chamber which means that this section must be more robust to survive such environment because inside of the combustion chamber temperature can reach up to 1400 degrees of celsius it must be also shielded so spark don't create interferences in the communication and of course they are also cooled you can see hole in here and here on the side uh, this is prevention against uh, overheat but also to extend the lifetime but not only igniter plug but igniter lead as well from the point when it enters to the hot section of the engine by air from the booster discharge and this air exit the lead at the igniter plug okay this was more or less all about these two igniter plugs and now I would like to show you how to replace this one on CFM 56-5B which belongs to Airbus A320 so let's take a look at it as I mentioned before igniter plug and igniter lead is cooled and as a first thing we need to remove cooling shroud which is hold on the spot by one clamp And since shroud is removed, I can show you holes through which flows the cooling air from the booster discharge. Here you can see how shroud helps guide cooling air around the igniter plug and then it is discharged under the C duct and become ventilation air for the core compartment. As the next step we need to remove igniter lead. One important note, before you start work on the ignition system, make sure that the ignition system was de-energized for at least 5 minutes and I guess I don't need to tell you that it's better to not touch the contacts. 
Of course, don't forget ignition system voltage is very high and uh, ignition exciters can have an electrical charge even when they are not energized, so be careful. And since lead is removed, we can remove igniter plug. It was not really hard to remove this one, but be prepared for the possibility that spark plug can be stuck because engine goes through a huge range of temperatures, which means that material shrinks and expand. That was removal and we can proceed with installation. First of all, I need to apply a small amount of graphite Vaseline to the spark igniter thread that connect with the igniter pushing in the combustion boost case. When this is done, I can install igniter plug inside of the bushing and don't forget it need to be tied only by hand until it touch bushing. And whenever I'm sure that igniter plug is correctly installed, I need to torque it. And after duplicate inspection of igniter plug installation, I can proceed with the installation of the igniter lead. And first step is a replacement of the blue seal on the igniter lead. This seal is responsible for centering lead inside of the igniter plug. And when this is done, I need to install igniter lead into the igniter plug, but again, it need to be hand tight. And as a next step, I need to torque connector's nut. And all what's remaining is installation of the cooling shroud on the igniter lead. This was replacement of the igniter plug on the left hand side, but ignition system consists of two independent system because like everything on the aircraft, this system need to have a backup. And meanwhile you're watching me replacing the other igniter plug, let me tell you a little bit about the system. The ECU or engine control unit select one ignition system for two successive automatic starts, then it select the other ignition system. This is to avoid dormant failure and premature wear of the spark igniters. But during manual startup, both system works at the same time. Okay, as you can see, I already removed the second igniter and we can proceed with installation. And of course, I'm following the same procedure as before. So first of all, I need to lubricate the thread of the igniter plug. After that, I will install the igniter plug into the igniter bushing and tie it by hand. Then I need to torque it. And as a next step, I need to replace blue seal. And when seal is on place, I can carefully install the igniter lead inside of the igniter plug. Then I need to torque the nut of the connector. And the last step is installation of the cooling shroud. And all what's remaining is to perform test of both igniters. First of all, I need to close CBs, which I pulled before I start with the replacement of the igniter plugs. Then I need to energize FADEC, which controls engine number one, because only then I can perform tests on the engine. The test itself is very simple, I need to leave mode selector in normal, then move master lever into on position and then activate the test. During this test EEC will gonna cycle both system for 10 seconds. After this test, I need to switch to channel B and repeat the whole process again.
test through the channel A past the test, so I need to move master lever in the off position and then I need to perform test for channel B, but since it's the same procedure, I'm not gonna show you that. But after this test, don't forget to de-energize FADEC. And since both systems passed the test, we can return aircraft back to the serviceable conditions, which means close the sea ducts and the fan calls. Okay, this is more or less all what I want to tell you about this igniter plug. Uh, if you have any questions, please write them down in the comments below. If you learn something new, please give me a like, it helps me grow. And uh, also, I would like to ask you to don't use this video as a maintenance manual. Always use latest documentation released by manufacturer. From my side, this is all. My name is Tomáš, this was Aircraft Maintenance with Zeto. And I will see you on next one. Bye.